What is going on guys? Yes, I rented a yacht for the first time. We're about to go see it. I don't know what to expect really. We're just gonna look at it. This is where we're spending the next two or three nights. Here we go. Okay, so we have a double decked dock. Uh, the river is quite muddy because they've had a lot of rain. I'm in Tennessee, if you're wondering. This is actually the Tennessee River. That is the first thing. This is my first time even seeing the Tennessee River. And uh, when I see boulders and stuff like that, I'm thinking like smallmouth and largemouth spotted bass. Like I said, it is muddy because they've had some rain, but looks fantastic overall. Oh man, this is gorgeous. This is gorgeous. I haven't seen any of this until right now. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this thing. I have this all to myself. Okay, so um, we have to go down the stairs here to get to it. Oh man. Look uh, look at all this structure stuff. Guys, I'm gonna have great fishing right from the dock here. The reason why the, the, I wanted to rent this yacht, number one is just because it, it looked cool and so far in fact, it seems bigger to me than even in the pictures. But the other reason I wanted to rent it is because it came with kayaks and life jackets and paddle boards. Wow, they even have the paddle boards inflated. So I can go out and explore the river in these kayaks. Look, they even have fishing poles here. This, is, this all came with the yacht. All right. So apparently we go up these stairs. This is cool. The Sea Ray, or maybe that's the company. I don't know if that's the company or the name. Oh, man. Guys, are you kidding me? I could catfish off the back deck here. Look, I can sit here, throw out some catfish lines off the back deck. Oh. And we have here are the captains. Oh, man. Look at this. Oh, check it out. Look, even has a minnow bucket already with it. Oh man, this is cool. This is sweet. All of this space back here, you could climb down, I could land the fish on here. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Look, we got party lights. All right, now how, okay, this must be the door. <sighs> Remember, this first time I've seen any of this. Cool. Oh my goodness. Folks, this is the most luxurious camp, camp, I've ever done. Whoa. Whoa. Oh, not bad. Not bad at all. Oh, who knew you could experience the yacht life without actually having to buy a yacht. We got a bathroom in here too. Good grief. I think on the description they said there were two bathrooms. We got a we got a microwave. We got a whole little kitchen here. We got a, a couch. We have stuff for coffee in the mornings, television if we want to watch television. Not gonna be watching any television. I'm gonna be fishing. And here's the whole other room. Right down here look another bed. Ooh, this is a bigger bed. I might this might be actually be my one here. Another little bathroom there. This is sweet. We have wine glasses. I mean, what what a crazy I don't even know what to say. This is so cool. Now there is one thing about this that I was disappointed about, and that is I can't take the yacht anywhere on the river. It has to stay moored to the boat dock and I was really disappointed by that I mean why wouldn't they let a total stranger take out their half a million dollar yacht where's the trust these days folks well you can even we I can even walk out here fish off of this so I can fish off of the the off of the yacht itself I can fish off the dock and then I have kayaks if I actually want to go somewhere man first order of business I'm gonna um, get get all the stuff, all my suitcases and stuff unpacked, get kind of settled in the yacht, and then it's gonna get dark in a couple hours. And since the river's high, I'm not feeling too confident about taking the kayaks out at the moment, especially since it's starting to get dark. So we're probably just gonna fish right off the yacht. So, 
taken this tube off. Love the Dry Creek Outfitters tubes. But uh, the water is like chocolate milk right now. In fact, over the river, there's there's junk. There's uh, there are tree limbs, there's sticks. There's just all kinds of stuff floating down the river. It is chocolate milk. And in my experience, when things look like this, one of the best lures you can use is a spinner bait. It's brand new, so it has the tube on the hook there. So take that off. Make sure you always remove the plastic tube from the hook before you start casting that baby. You're going to have a tough day of fishing. Anyway, big white spinner bait with a number five willow leaf blade on it. One of the first places when I got here, I saw fish jump right there. It was off camera. Um, it was when I, I walked into my car, I just happened to glance out, and right on the tip of that tree right there, I saw fish jump. First cast of the trip. So what we're gonna do guys is go around here. There's some riprap along the shore down there. Hmm. I don't know if this is somebody else's property. Uh, might be. You think they mind? I'm not sure though. It's attached like you park in the same spot. So I think if you share a parking spot, it's okay to fish off here. Look at these good looking rocks here. Don't be surprised if we get bit right on the rocks. Because usually when the water's high like this, they'll be right in the shallow stuff. <laughs> By the time I got settled in the yacht, I only had about two hours left to fish and I pounded the shoreline cover all up and down the bank, spinner baits, buzz baits, jigs, anything that made a sound. I tried to get these fish's attention, uh, but just could not get a reaction from anything. Well, we fished until it got dark and uh, nothing at first, but we are inside and watch this. Click this button. Even, they're even adjustable. <laughs> That's cool. That's a party in here. Anyway, I am super tired, guys. I was going to night fish for catfish, and I had all these plans and stuff like that. But honestly, I'm so tired from traveling all day um, that I was like, I'm just going to go to bed early so I can wake up early and we can hit it hard. But tonight, I'm going to go to bed early. I'm not going to worry about night fishing and all that jazz. Uh, I will see you guys tomorrow for a big day. Now this is camping. Woo. Good morning, everybody. Sun is just coming over the ridge. Let's go outside here. Door. Ooh. Man, a little cold this morning, folks. Ooh, it's chilly this morning, but beautiful morning. Sun is just coming up over the ridge. River's still high. Did it come up? I think it came up a little bit more last night. It's looking like. Well, got a good night of sleep. Oh, I needed that badly. We're going to get a little breakfast this morning and then we're going to, uh... Let's figure out what we're going to do. Let's figure out what we're going to do. Ah, uh, bachelor fridge. This morning's coffee. Yacht life. Yacht life, folks. Whew, it is just chilly. It's quite a bit colder than the other day. Whoa, whoa, guys. You want to know how much the water came up last night? Look at that. That shore that we were standing along, it's underwater. It's come up like three feet. That can make the fishing a little tough. That can make the little fishing a little tough when the water's rising like that. Ooh -hoo. Those are some good looking night crawlers right there, folks. Just a little bottom fishing with night crawlers to start off the morning. This is gonna be a tough day, folks, because it's cold. Cold front just moved through and water's high. That's about as tough as it gets. All right, we're coming around to this side with the old worm and we're just gonna flip in right behind this tree here. Just a little worm action, that's it. Getting a bite, getting a bite. Oh, missed him. 
He stole my worm. There's a fish right down there, folks. Right behind that tree. Gotta get another worm. Folks, there's... Oh, it's a salamander. Oh, that's cool. Oh, yeah, an... Oh, shoot, I should have grabbed him. Should have used him for bait. Dang it. Wait, maybe there are more in the grass. Now, that's not... I've never... Oh, look, there he is. There he is. See him swimming on the surface? Little salamander. Um... You know, I wonder if I should use those for bait. I'll bet that makes a great bait. We don't have salamanders in Idaho. Look, see, a big bite, but then it lets it go. Got him. Yes. First fish of the day, folks. Okay, uh, he's behind the cable. Um, we're going to have to figure out. Oh, man, this is a good fish, guys. This is a good fish. We're going to have to get over here and climb. Oh, man. Oh, man. Trying to get in the trees here. What is it? Oh, we got a catfish. We've got a catfish, folks. Uh-oh. Um, can I lift him? Oh, I can't. Yes, I can. Yes. Come on. Big catfish. Yes. Yes, exactly what I was hoping for. Pull him up on back. Yes. Yes, folks. A channel catfish. Whoa. He ate three worms right behind that tree there. Yes! I thought since the waters come up so high, that usually means there are all kinds of like bugs and, and creatures like salamanders and stuff that get flooded out. And so usually the fish come up really shallow. So I thought I'm just gonna fish as shallow as possible. And sure enough, yes. That's what I'm talking about. Oh guys, we're gonna fried catfish this evening. Mm. A little salamander. Look at that little guy. He has like a blue tail. All right, there you go, little fella. I just put, I put just enough water in there for him to be able to swim around without. But then he still has like a place for dry land. Cause I don't. Do they have gills? No, they don't have gills. Probably. We'll put a few sticks and things and stuff in there for him to climb on. If 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 these catfish are spawning, there will be a second one laying right in the exact same spot. You know what we're going to do, guys? We are going to add our salamander to the hook. Willie we'll salamander catch fish. Um, if you're new to fishing, there's a rubber band method where when you're using live bait, you actually hook it on with the rubber band so that it doesn't kill it. Um, right away, it keeps it on the, alive and on the hook for as long as possible. But even if I, if I knew, even if I could do that, it would still be... Um, there we go, salamander on the hook. I just barely hooked it through his leg. Like he's trying to turn around and bite. Um, even if I did want to do that method, I have no rubber bands with me. So um, we're gonna have to just do this for now. We're oh, getting a bite already. That was like 20 seconds baiting. Already, already folks. Look, something's taking it, come on. It's biting it and it wants it. Missed him. Missed him. Look, hook is gone. Or not hook is gone. Bait's gone. <sighs> Something wanting that salamander. How, how do you catch those things? Like, do they... I, I, obviously, I caught one, but, like, how do you find them? Do you, like, just flip over rocks? Like, where do they live most of the time? That dude was just, like, swimming around. All right. Let's get some breakfast rolling here, folks. Come down in our luxurious yacht. Cool. We have pots and pans and all that jazz. The light in here is kind of weird because uh, because of the, like the heavily tinted windows, but that's what makes it so comfortable. So a little bacon rolling here. You know what I should do, guys? I should try using bacon for bait. I've actually never done that before, but my dad said when he was a kid, he used to use bacon all the time. I think he said you just use it raw. You don't it's not you don't have to cook it or anything. You just We're getting there. Check it. We have everything we need right in here, silverware, a spatula for the eggs. 
everything right in this little mini kitchen. <laughs> this is cool. The bacon is done. Nice and crispy. And now look at all that bacon grease we have right there. We're gonna cook our eggs and all that. Woo! Thought I'd come outside, starting to get warmer. Don't have to have my coat on and stuff. Yeah, it's supposed to get high like 68 or 70 today, which is which is perfect. Perfect. Let's say a quick prayer here. What I really need is a woman with me on these trips. And it would be romantic. I'm keeping I'm keeping this idea in mind for uh, for the future, let's put it that way. And if you could rent one that if it was on the ocean or something, they'd actually let you take it out on the water. There have to be those rentals out there. Like a week-long yacht trip on the ocean. That'd be cool. Alrighty, my friends, packed up, ready to go. It's a gorgeous day. Man, it's just beautiful here in Tennessee. Let's go exploring. What? Park is closed. Well, folks, uh, the park is is closed. Ooh, here's a cool looking lake. And why do we have a porta potty sitting right in the middle of the road? That makes no sense whatsoever. Oh, road clo Oh, construction. Guys, there's construction going on all over the joint. Can we fish right here? I see two stumps in the water. All right, well, since we cannot go to the park below the dam, this doesn't look half bad. Yeah, and look at all the, oh, in fact, there are fishermen on a boat. That's a good sign. If locals are on a boat fishing the riprap, it must be good. I am, look at these stumps and stuff right there and like concrete blocks and everything. Guys, we are fishing 100% here. We'll talk to these fishermen too, see what they know. Somebody quit fishing. They gave up. Well, they were using a bait casting rod with a spinning reel. So that may give us a clue. Y'all doing any good? Y'all doing any good? No? Terrible. This is my first time fishing this lake. What would you recommend? All right, thank you. Thank you. Good luck. Guys, that uh, fisherman there, he, uh, he said, he said, if you want to use something that catches everything in this lake, he said, just use like a little six inch finesse worm. Got it. Yes. On the robot worm. Oh, it's, oh, it's, a, it's an indecent. I get a smallie. Uh huh, fish on. On that robo worm, guys. That guy said, go finesse. He said, a little worm is the way to go, that local. Oh, it's a smallmouth, guys. It's a nice smallmouth, too. It's a real decent one. I mean, no record setter, but, uh, oh, he's trying to get around the piece of wood. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, a little tiny hook. Oh, come on, dude. Yes! Guys, that is what I'm talking about. Look at that beautiful bronze back. Oh, yes! on that little robo worm. I asked that boat, I said, what's the best bait for this lake? Oh, that is fantastic. That's probably, oh, that's close, that's about a three pounder. <laughs> All right guys, had a good time on the dam. But uh, didn't catch any other fish. And I lost about $125 worth of lures on those rocks. Or at least that's what it felt like. <laughs> felt like. I was getting snagged all over the place. So I was like, well, I'll be happy with my one fish. And we will move on. We're on the other. We actually drove across the dam to the other side. And we're going to find some people. There's people over here fishing and doing stuff. So i got to find my own little corner here. Oh, look at this, guys. Look at that big log there and some sticks and stuff out there. This is, this looks like a good catfishing spot too. All right, first thing folks, we're gonna try a little slip bobber on here. 
and a little bluegill hook. And back there, I snagged a couple little worms, little night crawlers. I'm gonna catch a few bluegill so that we can have those for catfish bait this evening. And also when you put, you know, when you put a worm on a on a hook and throw it on a bobber, you never know what might be down there. And we gill flip a little bobber out, a little simple bobber fishing. And I'm gonna take this ranch right here. I'm gonna break that off so we have a nice clear view of what we're doing here. Oh, we're getting a bite already, folks. Getting a bite already. That was fast. Got it. Oh, this ain't no bluegill, folks. This ain't no... Oh, it's a catfish. Oh, another catfish. Oh, that was like... That was just a few seconds. Oh, we have a light wire hook here, folks. He's feisty. He is feisty. We gots to be careful. Nice. Come here, come here, you. I have six-pound test and a little tiny hook. Come here, you. Yes! Yes, folks! That was instant! <laughs> Trying to catch some bait for catfish, and we end up getting a catfish. You could have bit through the hook if you had, just, had that just right. Folks, that is what I'm talking about. Man, that's gonna cook up nice! You know what? That's right. You just gotta come out fishing, and you never know what's gonna happen, really. You just gotta get out there. <laughs> All right, folks, cast back out there. Never know what you're gonna catch. That's the fun thing about worms. Just never, never know. Got, got him. Something else? Something else? Oh, now here's a bluegill. <laughs> this is what we're after here, folks. Add him in with the catfish. <laughs> two fish, two casts. Can we make it three fish in three casts? Just saw something jump out there. Yep, there we go. Bite already. This is a good little spot here, folks. With all this wood and stuff around, I'll bet a lot of fish gather in here. Got him. Another little bluegill. Yeah, this is exactly what we wanted, folks. With the big cats. Four for four, anyone? Got him. This is another non-bluegill for sure, folks. What do we got? What do we got? It's a drum. Holy mackerel. <laughs> We've got the variety going. It's a nice drum, too. I mean, a decent size for eating. Oh, 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 come here, come here, come here. There we go. Got him. <laughs> Guys, that is so cool. I mean, four fish in like four or five casts. I mean, we, we're gonna try, we're gonna eat this long with the catfish. There we go, all the longest cast of the day. Let's see if this yields something different on our last worm. Got him. This is not a bluegill, unless it's a giant bluegill. This is, what, what do we got? Something weird gone again, folks. It's another catfish. Another, <laughs> a small one. He's all tangled up. Oh look, the he did the death roll and the line literally wrapped around him. Oh, now he's coming undone. Good grief. Oh shoot, he snapped the line. <gasps> no, 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 my, oh my gosh, my slip bobber. Oh no, my slip bobber's right there at least. At least I got my slip bobber back. Well, there we go, folks loaded the bucket at this spot we came we saw we conquered well that was a good stop again guys i'm just shore fishing anybody can do this anybody can just go along the bank and uh, i've got my bucket and uh my fishing rods or you have a backpack i have my camera stuff in my backpack so i carry a little bit more equipment than most people but all you need is a backpack fishing rod it does take some skill to learn the the skills but uh Takes a little while, takes some trial and error, but uh, grab yourself some worms and go for it and you never know what you can catch. And it is so much fun. This is one of my favorite activities of all time. 
if you couldn't tell. Folks, we got company. As long as they aren't on my yacht. They must be staying in the... Oh, there, I see people moving around in that trailer. So I've got neighbors. Hopefully they don't cramp my style. Boy, it's gotten windy out here, folks. Ah, home again. Home again. Jiggity jig. Ah. Well, guys, welcome to uh, the first cook-up in the yacht. We have everything here. I'm going to fry up the fish, of course. We, this is all the fish we caught today, uh, the two catfish and the drum, uh, as well as some fried pickles. Fried pickles, fried fish, and then I have here some asparagus. I was feeling especially uh, luxurious when I went into Walmart. And I don't know how that goes together. Feeling luxurious when you go to Walmart. Anyway, that doesn't make any sense. But anyway, we're, we, we, I'm going asparagus. I've never cooked asparagus on my channel. And it seemed appropriately fancy. That would be the way to put appropriately fancy for the occasion. But there is a little problem um, with catfish in the South. I just know this from other people telling me. And that is that catfish in the South taste money because they live in the really muddy rivers. They kind of eat anything and everything. And so one of the tricks to making catfish taste better is to soak them in Sprite. Soaking a, uh, a fillets in Sprite takes a lot of the uh, the muddy flavor out of a catfish. Well, I have no spray. I realized that at the last second. So, but I do have a sun drop, which basically is not uh, kind, of, well, kind of the same thing. Not really, but it's close. It's a citrus soda. I think it's the citrus that takes the flavor, uh, that muddy flavor out of the fish. So what we're gonna do, pour some sun drop in a couple of bowls here. Sun drop is basically like Mountain Dew. It's definitely a southern thing. I love it. I don't, I don't, they don't have sun drop in Idaho. And we are going to take these fillets and we are going to drop them right in the old sun drop there and let them soak. I know it seems weird, but it works. Try it. Try it for yourselves. It really works. We're going to let these soak for about 15 minutes or so. While the fish are marinating, we're going to take some of this, uh, Fish fry, you want some fish fry, pour some of that in there. Salt it real good. Fresh ground, the only way to ride. And Ace Video's first cast seasoning, link to this in the description below for a Cajun kick. And we just mix it around real good there. I know that it looks cra crazy to, to do this and maybe even a little unappetizing sometimes, but uh, I promise guys, try it and it will make the catfish taste better. And a lot of coating sticks to them, so these guys will be extra crispy. All right, bring our fish over here. Discovered, got this light up here. I didn't know that the whole time. All right, we should be ready to cook here. Oh yeah, extra crispy catfish. Well, she's boiling now, folks, but uh, I'm afraid that's about as hot as we're gonna get in uh, in the little, um, you know, in this little, I don't know, should, you know, in the yacht, they're not gonna have as nice of, of accommodations that way. I think that's about as hot as we're gonna get. We may not have super crispy catfish, but uh, it'll be good. We'll be fine. It's on the highest setting it can go. We're 10 out of 10 in terms of heat, but you know, since it's a it's a yacht, they have to kind of shrink everything down, make everything smaller, make everything fit. And so you're just not gonna have like a super powerful stove, um, yeah, stove top, so. But hey, we could be out in the storm that's kind of brewing right now, um, you know, cooking in 20 mile an hour winds, so. Oh, guys, guys. Look at that right there. The crispy crunch. Oh, fried catfish is one of my favorite ways to have fish. Not bad at all. That all in land. Beautiful, golden brown and crispy. Tennessee catfish. Viz Idaho catfish. I have to say, they both taste the same. 
Maybe it's the way I prepared them. But um, this tastes just like an Idaho catfish. It's exactly what I expected, basically. Now, we need to cook some asparagus. I'm going to show you the simplest way I know to cook asparagus. I'm going to throw in some fried pickles. If you are a bachelor like me, you will appreciate this because steaming is just too much work, right? So all you do is you take and you wet a paper towel and uh, like this, and then you put your asparagus, <laughs> asparagus in it like so, and you wrap it up. That's it. And uh, and then you just stick it in the microwave. Voila, microwave asparagus. And watch, I will show you. It'll turn out just as good as if it was steamed. <clears throat> Three minutes or so. Boom. Asparagus will be done. Fish in the fryer. And now we come to the fried pickles. Throw some of those bad boys right in there. Just pitch them right in. Just mix them all around like so. Coat them in. And you can just use the same batter that you cooked the fish in. Doesn't have to be fancy. I mean, you can get fancy. You can find some fancy recipe online, but this is simple stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you microwave asparagus. Look at that. It's cooked. It's cooked. You know, before we with my salt. Must have salt on asparagus. Thank you for the to the subscriber who sent me the popcorn salt. Because popcorn salt is light and dusty and it sticks to everything. I really like it. Mm. I'll tell you folks. Three minutes of microwave and it's as good as steamed. We have asparagus. We have our fried fish done. Just need to fry up these pickles real fast. Pickles fry really quickly. That's why we saved them for last. I actually love the creaking sound of this boat. Like the wind is picked up, so it's really, it's gotten quite loud. And it's wonderful to sleep to, to, to hear the water like splashing against the side of the boat in the wind. That's nice. Now this is what I'm talking about. We got fried pickles, fried catfish, and asparagus. If that's not a southern meal, I don't know what is. You know, a southerner would probably have coleslaw. I, I forgot, I did not plan this. I forgot I have coleslaw in the fridge. I literally bought it for when I fried catfish. Went to the store and I got this. This is not homemade or anything like that, but Still good. You know, I'm just gonna put it right on the fish. Bam! Right on top of the fish. Oh, coleslaw and fried catfish. My mouth is watering right now. I'm telling you, folks, I might, I might move to the south. I, I love it here. I've been, I've been having a blast. Hmm. Hmm. No. We have bread and butter pickles that are fried instead of dill. This will be a little taste test too, because I've only had dill. I wanted to mix up see if bread and butter would be any better. Hmm. To be honest, that's a good pickle too. Bread and butter fried pickles. I'm telling y'all, for the next family vacation, go to Google, type in yacht rentals. I had no idea until three days ago. This is the thing. This is fun. This is a really, really fun time. And right now the fishing right off the yacht isn't super great, but if you get one that is, I get the river was low right now, and I could just go and cast right off. You don't even have to, you know, leave if you don't want to. You can cook, you can sleep. I have to think of the only probably ocean-going ones. They'd actually let you drive it out, because on a river, it's really unsafe. You have to know how to read the river. You have to be paying attention. And so, you know, I, I don't. If I was the owner of this thing, I wouldn't trust it to total strangers. You know, to take it for a cruise. So, um, on a river, on an ocean, I might. I highly recommend. If you want an unusual vacation, an unusual trip, instead of booking a hotel, get one of these. I'm gonna be spoiled after this. Well guys, thank you for hanging out today. I hope you guys enjoyed. I am gonna dive in this bed and I'm not gonna wake up till that sun comes through that curtain and wakes me up. So, see you guys tomorrow.
start of another day. It's really early in the morning, actually, extremely early. Like, the size, the sky is just getting orange. So, it is me. It's gonna be fun. It's gonna be beautiful. Oh, look at this. And through the t heavily tinted windows, it looks kind of funky, but, uh, all right, first thing we're gonna do is make some coffee this morning. So their system of coffee apparently is like the press system. Um, I actually haven't used, I used one of these like once. So first thing I do is get some water bottling. Water pressure is getting a little weak. Are we running out of water? Did I use up all 500 gallons? <laughs> I don't know how many gallons there really are. Ooh, that's my heat kicking on. Guys, this is, I mean, uh, I ain't going back to camping after this. Regular camping, tent camping. That's for the birds, man. That is just like, that's cool all by itself. I feel fancy. Actually, it's a real great way to make coffee for like camping trips. I'm gonna have to actually keep that in mind. Voila! Oh! Nice. Sun just popped over the horizon. What we're gonna do, guys, is I just don't feel comfortable taking out the kayaks or uh, when the water's this high and, and fast. When I'm solo, if I was with somebody, that'd be different. So I'm actually gonna go, I had such a great time at the uh, lake yesterday. And I'm gonna go up there and uh, we're gonna gather up our stuff here and uh, go up there and, and just bass fish and just generally fish because I had such a great time up there yesterday and a lot of fish are biting too. Of course, we're gonna stop at the spot where we uh, caught a three pounder the other day. And you know, I love the porta potty in the middle of the road. That is such a classy touch. Folks, we're going full on Hoppy's Hog Buzz. This is a different kind of, I picked it up because I've never seen a buzz bait like this. Observe how it's curved like that. I thought it was an interesting design. We'll see how it performs underwater. I think it's going to cause the lure to actually be um, to sit down deeper in the water, but then you'll still get the nice buzzing sound. I'm going to try it because it's quite windy out here, and uh, I think a buzz bait with the wind blowing straight into shore is going to be a good option. All right, first cast of the day. Oh, I literally hit the stumps. Alright guys, so I came down to this little turnoff spot. We have a nice little picnic table there, and uh, we're just kind of running and gunning. We fished one other spot just for a little bit, but it was just wasn't looking good. Just didn't feel right. But uh, this spot here, we're kind of like in the back of this cove, and like there's this big log right here. Let's cast around this big log. Got to be careful of snakes and stuff in this in this stuff though. Anyway, let's cat. Let's let's fish this big log and fish all the logs and flooded stuff around the corner. Got it. Right on the tip of the log, guys. Oh, oh nice. Large mouth. It's a large mouth. Yes. Yes, yes. He just, he, I mean, he took off with it. There we go. Look, just a little. I switched from the blue to this green one because I, uh, I ran out of blue ones. So, not a bad little large mouth. That was fun. Now go down there, tell your old man. Tell your old man I want, I want a piece of him. Yes. I was wondering what you're using for bait. I'll, I'll, I'll sit, like, I live right down the street. Uh-huh. And I was fishing over there earlier, the other day, and I couldn't catch nothing. I'll, sh I'll show you, in fact, I'll give you some. I just opened a brand new pack of these worms. So I was actually talking with a local guy who was on a bass boat. And, uh, cause I'm, I'm this is only the second time I've ever fished this lake. I was like, what do you use? And, uh, he said a long, thin worm We'll catch about anything and so i just i just opened up this pack so i have like 20 of them let me give you some if you want to use oh, you're like bottom fishing or oh yeah i'm oh sorry doing just like a simple texas rig or or like i caught one the other day because it was really snaggy i just put a tiny split shot like about a foot above the line i've had these like in my tackle box forever never really used them so thanks you're welcome you ever watch fishing videos yeah i'm a youtuber I actually make fishing videos i'll give you my 
or if you want to look at it right now, I guess. Then I don't have to give you a card. What is it? It's called Ace Videos. A C E Videos. Should be blue and orange. Yep, that's it. Right, I'll hey, thanks, man. Thanks. I'm doing it. I'm, I, it's mostly like I live in Idaho, so it's Pacific Northwest, Hawaii, kind of like all that area. So you live in Idaho. I live in Idaho. Yes. You're in Tennessee. Uh huh. Wow. And so now I'm starting to film like a Tennessee series. And so there should be some Tennessee videos coming out real soon. So. Oh, wait, you're yeah. recording right now? Uh, is it recording? Oh, yeah, I guess it is recording. That was cool. That guy was, uh, he was watching me. He actually was trying to find his dog. Um, uh, his dog ran away. And so he just watched me for a little bit. And uh, he saw me catch the bass. And he said he fished all morning and didn't get anything. So he's wondering what I, what I was using. Oh, guys, I got another bite. I just, come on. I got another bite right there. Oh, getting a bite. Got him. Got him. Yes. <laughs> oh. Right in there. Yes. What do we got? Another large mouth. Not again, not a giant, but we're catching some fish. It's been a little while. We might, uh, you never know, especially at this lake. Lake Chick Chick Chickamauga, when you can run into a big one. So that's what we're hoping for, but I will take these as well. That is fun. I love bass fishing. You guys, a tournament fisherman and I'll stuff for years, guys. What do you guys think? What do you think? Should we just, uh, should we just fish some of these little holes right here? He's gonna drop it down, you never know. Oh my gosh, right down there. Oh, look at that. <laughs> that was so cool. Just right in that little hole right there. I got I got tangled on this stupid branch. And uh, while I was trying to get that off, he must have come over and bit it. Nice, nice, nice. That was cool. Look how fat that bass is. It's definitely a spawner. In that shallow water, in early spring, this time of year, we got a few spawners going. I'm gonna release her over here because I don't want to disturb that spot. Guys, I can easily see. I can easily see a. Uh, hey, no, 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 the other way. The other way, sweetheart. You gotta. That way. <laughs> we may have to help her out a little bit here. Hey, you in the weeds. She's underwater, so it's not like she can't breathe. I just. Hey. There. That was the hardest release I've ever. Had for a bass. Hey. Hey. Is that really you? Uh huh. Are you a subscriber? I've been subscribed since 50,000. <laughs> hey, what's your name? Dakota. Dakota, nice to meet you, Dakota. We were listening on your bed last night watching one of your videos. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Wait. I, yeah, I didn't realize who you were until I talked <laughs> to him because I, I walked home and then I walked that way and he met me and we started walking that way and I was like, I just, I just met Ace. You, have you heard of him? He's like, yeah, that's who we were watching last night. Like, <laughs> I didn't subscribe because I usually don't until like, after I watch a bunch of videos. Uh, yeah, yeah, I me too. One, I rarely subscribe. I watched the one with Cameron in it, the little kid. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We're fishing fish for walleye and stuff. Yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. First ever walleye. I didn't like, think you'd be down in this area. So I've, this is the first time I've been down Tennessee in like 12 years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm gonna start doing like southern, like going around all the southern yeah. states and fishing. So I've been here about two weeks and filming videos. And so yeah, yeah. here. Yeah. Uh -huh. The fishing, the crawdads are pretty nice. Crawdad, oh really? See, yeah. oh, when do the when's crawdad season? It's pretty we much any time. Like, we we, two days we ago. caught, we found a blue one. We, oh, that's cool! I want to get we, that on camera. We find them all all the time, but like right here, when the water's down, the water just raised up. Like you missed it. Like oh shoot! We had a whole tornado thing and everything. Oh yeah, yeah. I saw that. You yeah. you just barely. I, I was in it. East Tennessee when the tornadoes like swept through, and I, we didn't get anything. You barely sure. missed it. So yeah. Thank you so much to um, Dakota and Darian for um, coming up and saying hi. And I want to say, if you guys ever see me out and you guys want to come say hi, please do, please do. I like, I love meeting subscribers, and uh, yeah, that's just, it's so much fun meeting subscribers. So please come up and say hi if you guys see me out. Thank you guys so much for hanging out on this epic adventure, and I'll see you in the next one.